so sorry. Hi. I'm just finishing up my snack. I made a beet, carrot, and apple salad to enjoy outside. And I love eating healthy snacks like this because it gives me tons of energy to explore and run around. I'm Miss Megan with Land to Learn, and today we are gonna be exploring all of the living things that we can find in our garden and how they get their energy. Because just like us, everything live needs energy to be able to move and grow. Are you ready to get started? At the end of today's lesson, you'll have an opportunity to do a drawing with me. And if you choose to participate in that part of the lesson, these are the materials that you'll need. You will need a piece of paper and something to write with. Do you have a favorite snack that gives you energy? We aren't the only ones that eat from our garden. Animals live there too and also need to eat. Our garden has lots of living things in it and it's all because our garden is a habitat. A habitat is a place that has food, water, and shelter. Animals need these three things to be able to survive. Luckily, our garden has food, water, and shelter. So we have lots of animal friends that we share the garden with. All living things need energy to be able to grow. We know that animals get their energy from eating food. But how do plants get their energy? Plants are different from animals. Most plants can't just open up their mouth and eat a caterpillar, or pull their roots out of the ground and run after a really fast bug. So how do plants get their energy to grow? Plants actually make their own energy. They don't have to eat like animals. Plants use sunlight, water, and air. They mix these three ingredients together to make their own energy that they use to grow. Let's pretend to be plants. You're good at playing pretend, right? You can be any plant you want. I'm gonna imagine myself as a beautiful, bright yellow sunflower. So get your plant ready. You can do this sitting down or standing up. And first you need to put out your leaves. Ah, can you feel the warm sun on your leaves? Absorb it, wiggle your leaves, absorb that sun. Oh, I feel so warm and delightful. Next, can you feel the gardener watering you? Ah, there's a special plant part we use to suck up the water. It's underground, do you know what it's called? The roots, go ahead. Suck up that water, bring it up your stem, put it into your leaves, and last but not least, we have water, we have sunlight. What else do we need to grow? Air, we need air to be able to make our own food. Now that we have our own food, we can get lots of energy to grow bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. <sighs> nice job, gardener. Once a plant has used sunlight, water, and air to create its own energy, some of that energy can move into an animal. This happens when an animal eats the plant. If a grasshopper eats a kale plant, some of the kale's energy moves into the grasshopper. Imagine that a bird swoops down and grabs the grasshopper and eats it. Where is the energy that was in the grasshopper? If the bird eats the grasshopper, where does the grasshopper's energy go? Into the bird. And do you remember how the grasshopper was nibbling on a plant? So the grasshopper had the plant's energy inside of it. So when the bird eats the grasshopper, it gets the plant energy and the grasshopper energy. This is called a food chain. It's how energy moves from different plants and animals as they eat each other up. We're gonna learn a little bit more about it. Let's use this spider as an example. Why do they have a web? Many spiders use their web to catch food. Spiders are carnivores, which means they only eat other animals. You would never see a spider munching on a tomato or a cucumber. This spider is using its web to catch a tasty dinner, a grasshopper. Here's another carnivore spider that caught something in its web for dinner. Can you tell what it is? Listen for the sound. A bumblebee. Here are some other carnivores that live in our garden habitat. They all eat other animals. Can you believe that all those carnivores are living and hunting in our garden? It's pretty neat. 
let's learn a little bit more about the animals that they could be hunting. In our garden, there are tons of animals that you can find nibbling on a kale leaf, or chomping into a juicy red ripe tomato, or even sucking the nectar out of the inside of a flower. The animals that only eat plants are called herbivores. Herbivores, you would never see an herbivore like a caterpillar hunting after a toad, right? Caterpillars only eat plants. That puts them in the eating group we call herbivores. Can you think of an animal that only eats plants? Do you see the holes in the leaves? That's a clue that there is an herbivore eating. We find herbivore clues all over the garden. Let's take a closer look. Can you see what animal is eating these turnip leaves? Caterpillars. Here are some other herbivores that live in our garden habitat. They all eat plants. Herbivores eat only plants. And carnivores, what do they eat again? Oh right, only animals. Thanks for your help. But there's actually a third group of eaters that you can find living in our garden habitat. Some animals can eat both plants and animals. We call this group of eaters omnivores. Omnivores can eat plants and animals in our garden habitat. That must be nice. They can find food all over the place. Here are some omnivores you can find in our garden. If you're up for it, I would love to draw a picture together. So if you want to participate, pause this video and grab your materials. First, we need to start with the three ingredients that plants use to make their energy. Do you remember what they are? Sunlight, water, and air. You can go ahead and start your food chain by drawing those three ingredients. Pause the video while you work. Next, we need to add a plant that uses the sunlight, water, and air as energy to grow. You can choose any plant you want. Here are some garden plants that you may know. Pick one and add it to your picture. Do you remember what type of eater only eats plants? An herbivore. Here are some herbivores that live in our garden. You can choose one of these or another one that you like and add it to your picture eating your plant. We're gonna use arrows to show where the energy is moving as we draw our food chain. So once your plant gets eaten by the herbivore, where does the energy from the plant go? Does it just disappear? No, it goes into the herbivore. So go ahead and draw an arrow from your plant to your herbivore. I chose to use a carrot as my plant. So as my herbivore, the caterpillar, munches on the carrot, the energy from the carrot goes into the caterpillar. So I'm gonna add an arrow going from my carrot plant to my caterpillar. Let's finish our food chain by adding a carnivore or an omnivore. Here are some of those eaters that live in our garden. Which one would be big enough to eat your herbivore? You can pick one here or another one that you know of. Go ahead and draw it. Last, we need to draw our final arrow to show where the energy from our whole food chain ends up. What is the last thing at the end of our food chain? That's right, the carnivore or omnivore. You can go ahead and add your last energy arrow, just like I did here. Wow, that was a lot of really hard science words and themes. Aren't food chains just the coolest? So as I continue to eat my apple, beet, and carrot salad, where is the energy from these plants going? Into me. Now I have the energy that these plants made themselves. Pretty cool. And now I can have energy to do things like ride a bike, go for a run, jump off this giant rock behind me. Thank you so much for learning with me today and I will see you all again soon. Bye.